Triskaidekaphobia. It's the fear of the number 13. Honestly, the, the way that this episode's going, I'm, I'm maybe starting to develop it. <laughs> um, so, I did a little bit of uh, I did a little bit of digging online, and uh, found out some interesting stuff about the uh, about the number thirteen. Um, there's apparently no real clear consensus uh, regarding sort of the for- folklore surrounding the superstition of thirteen being an unlucky number. Um, you know, Friday the 13th and the number 13 in general are considered to be really unlucky dates or numbers. And, uh, you know, Friday the 13th, of course, is said to be the unluckiest day of the year. Um, so of course, like you think about it, like there's, there's a lot, like along with any superstition like this, it's not like it's a rational thing. It's just, you know, we as humans are designed to pick up uh, patterns. And it's just interesting to me that there is no real, uh, discernible, um, for sure reason why we consider it to be 13, 13 to be unlike unlucky. So fun fact, apparently nearly 20 million people around the world are said to suffer from frigatriscodexcophobia, also called, I'm definitely b- butchering these, uh, parascot- I'll put it in the show notes. Anyhow, the fear of Friday the 13th. The fear of the number 13 is called Triskaidekaphobia, which we get from the Greek Tris or 3, Chi or and, Deca, 10, Phobos, fear. There's 13 Archimedean solids. Geometry in Archimedean solid is a highly systematic semi-regular convex polyhedral composed of two or more types of regular polygons meeting and identical vertices. Interesting. The number 13 is the sixth prime number. Prime number is, of course, a natural number, so a whole non-negative number greater than one with no positive divisors other than itself and one. So one popular explanation for the fear of the number 13 is basically that various cultures around the world have used lunar solar calendars for ages with approximately uh, 12 and a half ish lunations uh, per solar year. So basically 12 true months make up one year with a smaller, often ominous 13th month. Interesting. Um, 13 is part of the Fibonacci sequence, which is a series of numbers where the number is found by adding up the two before it. Um, Sequence can be found all throughout nature. It's said to use to make the Fibonacci uh, spiral an approximation of the golden ratio. Interesting. So in some ancient cultures, the number 13 represented femininity due to its correlation with the number of lunar, lunar or menstrual cycles in one year. One theory suggests that the solar calendar triumphed over the lunar. The number 13 became an unlucky or cursed number. So there's maybe a couple of different reasons why. Um, but uh, this is interesting. President F- Franklin Roosevelt was said to suffer from a mild case of triskaidekaphobia, According to a journalist and Roosevelt biographer, uh, John Gunther, quote, like most people with good luck, FDR was moderately, not excessively superstitious. He hated Friday the 13th. He would never start an important trip on a Friday if he could avoid it. And he li- disliked sitting down with, uh, di- uh, with 13 at dinner. Strangely, FDR passed away on April 12th, 1945, which was a Thursday. So there you go. Uh, why is 13 unlucky? We don't actually know. Um, what we can say for sure is if you live on the 14th floor in a building that skips floor 13, we uh, we know what's going on there. You're not fooling anyone. We're going to talk about Aziza and Zari next.
So here's what I know about the Aziz Hansari story that came out this past week. Um, based on the uh, the article that was written on in uh, Babe, I think it was, um, Aziz didn't break the law. Uh, he didn't do anything illegal. He's not um, he's not Louis C.K. He's not Harvey Weinstein. He's not Kevin Spacey. He is a person who acted like a dick. It's a hard thing to um, to sit here and like again, uh, Aziz Ansari is somebody who uh, who I've got a lot of um, a lot of respect for. I guess is the I don't know if I want to say that now, but you know he's somebody that I'm a fan of. Um, his uh, his stand up comedy I really enjoy. Uh, his uh, his work on Master of None is fantastic. Of course, Parks and Rec, one of my favorite favorite shows of all time. Um, I think along the same lines, it's hard. Uh, along the same lines as Johnny Depp, it's hard for me to uh, completely throw him under the bus because again, he didn't necessarily uh, do anything. He didn't do anything illegal um, from the sounds of things. He severely misread perhaps intentionally um how things were going on a date and uh you know i've got a lot of sympathy for this uh grace woman who that you know that's a that's a pseudonym um what i think we can um be sure of is that the way that these things uh get reported um sexual impropriety uh you know uh, sexual assault all those sorts of things i think like insofar as like obviously the our culture needs to take a look at itself uh it needs to continue to look at itself time's up needs to continue being uh doing uh, doing the work that it's uh doing um the me too movement uh needs to continue to grow and to uh change and to evolve um the way that um the way that these matters are reported though uh need to needs to be needs to take a real we need to take a real look at it um i'm going to refer you uh to a podcast that i listen to on a regular basis um which uh if you're not listening to it and you live in canada shame on you because you really should be listening to it uh it's canada land which is uh the media criticism show uh that we have here in canada it's a podcast and normally uh jesse jesse brown uh focus primary focuses primarily on uh, Canadian-centric stories, but uh, in his weekly edition on Thursdays, shortcuts. It's usually uh, something a little bit more, a little bit more broad, uh, where we talk about sort of what's in the news and how things are being reported and all that sort of thing. And uh, on this episode of uh, Shortcuts, which was uh, guest hosted by uh, Elamine Abdul Mahmoud, who I uh, really enjoy. He's um, He's normally uh, news creation at BuzzFeed News and uh, social media editor for BuzzFeed Canada. Um, he and uh, he and his co-host, which I'm sorry, I've completely misplaced her name. Let me just see if I can get it real quick. Okay, it was uh, Nahid uh, Mustafa. Um, they uh, they make a very serious case for, you know, this being kind of uh, a bad article, not just in terms of like, not to say that it makes any sort of false claim or uh, that it was reported incorrectly, but just sort of the way that the writing is laid out kind of makes you want to lose sympathy um, for this woman, Grace. So uh, I'm going to link to this show in the show notes. I'll link to the original article as well. Um, to, uh, to his credit, um, Aziz Ansari has said that, you know, the, the way that, uh, that these reports, uh, have been, uh, what this, what these reports have indicated, uh, wasn't his experience that he was very shocked and that, uh, he's taken it to heart and, uh, and has privately apologized as well. So that's, uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to leave the whole Aziz Ansari thing, um, Again, I think it's complicated, but I think this is a case where, um, you know, he was a dick, maybe. But um, I don't know. Like, we got to think about how we actually report these things. 
um, because it's important that uh, it's important that we get this stuff out there. Don't get me wrong. And it's important that uh, people who are more than just dicks uh, have their crimes brought out into the uh, into the sunlight. Um, but uh, let's not diminish it with uh, with bad reporting, I guess. Eh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm flip flopping a little bit too, too much. This is a weird show. Uh, next up, the uh, we're going to go back to the uh, the days of the old microphone, the devil's microphone with the uh, the back half of my chat with Luke. Hurt. <laughs> next thing uh but just really quickly before we get into the next one i, I want to go really quickly uh title belts okay what are your top five title belts just list your top five just five right off the jump yeah i'll go with uh, the big gold belt number one for me uh i will then go um the nwa 10 pounds of gold nice a different large gold belt not the big gold belts, just 10 pounds of gold. Uh, I like those two belts a lot. Uh, I'll go with the the Winged Eagle WWF World Heavyweight Championship from I guess it was 88 to 98. Yep. And Austin, Austin got his own belt, so kind of uh, through most of my childhood was wrestling. So that's three. Uh, I'll go with the classic Intercontinental title, although I do like the the remake of it better. I think it's a little crisper. Yeah. Uh, the one that the Miz currently holds. Um, so that'll be four. And for my fifth title, I think I will go, and maybe this is a bit of a duplicate of a previous answer, but I'll go with uh, Mick Foley's hardcore title because I love that at uh, the time of the smash plate and the, and the masking tape with the word hardcore on it. So I'll go with that for my five. Nice. All right. Um, Okay, so this one, this my first one is a little bit off the off the beaten path, but uh, I really always did like the look of the title, and it's the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship, which was around sort of like ninety seven through to I guess like two thousand two when the WCW was bought. Always really liked that title. Always thought that it looked really good. It was just sort of a shame that they never had anything to do with the uh, with the division. Uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, Intercontinental Title. Um, that was sort of used in the uh, 2000s, uh, the the one that like Shelton Benjamin would have held. Um, I always liked that one. Um, it was I liked how it was sort of sleek. It looked like it was sort of spherical, like you know more rounded than uh, than other titles were at the time. Um, I'm gonna go with the undisputed uh, championship, the one that Brock Lesnar held. Uh, always thought that they went away from that title uh too soon i know that it was sort of they did that sort of because uh because cena had the gimmick and uh and uh you know had to have the spinner uh plate but i i always really liked that title i always thought it was a shame that they never did anything with it um well so was that three um four i'll go with the um I'll go with the uh, the World Heavyweight Championship that not the Smoking Skull title, uh, but the uh, the WWF Championship that was held around that period of time uh, that like The Rock and Austin sort of traded back and forth. Uh, that was sort of the title when I was first getting into uh, wrestling. 